Hi, my name is Calvin Cook, and I'm a physical therapist at the CU Sports Med and Human Performance Center. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about management treatment of dizziness. So, dizziness can go by a lot of different forms and a lot of different names. The most common of which that I see is called vertigo. Uh, in recognizing your dizziness, you can look for a couple of different things. You can look for that sensation of, is the room spinning? You can look for that sensation of feeling motion sick. Or you can look for the sensation of feeling like you're on a boat in very choppy waters. So feeling very uneven or unsteady. And so uh, a big aspect of differentiating your dizziness can be looking at positional changes. So when you go from laying down to sitting to standing, if you have uh, dizziness with those type of movements, that can be a really big factor because we know that blood pressure changes in response to those positional changes. Another big aspect is the duration of your dizziness. Does it last for five to 10 seconds or does it seem to persist? So that can be very helpful in figuring out what type of dizziness you have. As far as a medicinal treatment of dizziness, the most common that I see is a medication called meclizine. And so this can be very helpful for bringing you from intense dizziness down to a more low to moderate level. And so although it's important to uh, assist with those uh, disturbances, meclizine in and of itself does not provide a cure for a vertigo type dizziness. It can help you to kind of manage those symptoms, but it doesn't help to treat the root cause. And so that's where physical therapy can be extremely beneficial. Through different positional testing and assessment, we can figure out kind of the uh, problem spot in that vestibular system. So the vestibular system, uh, as related to di dizziness, is made up of three separate canals. And so those canals sense rotational movement. And so when you have uh, rotational movement in the canals, but your eyes aren't seeing any rotational movement, that's where the mixed signals come in and you get that uh, visual disturbance, that sensation of the room spinning. So we can assess that through uh, two different treatments and assessments. So the first of which is called the Dix Hall Pike assessment, and that turns into what's called the Epley treatment uh, or the Epley maneuver. Uh, that is going to treat more posterior anterior canal, uh, the posterior canal of which is the most commonly affected. The second of which is the log roll assessment and then treatment. And so that's going to be targeted more towards that horizontal canal. And so uh, after we treat and assess those different canals, it's important to realize that the vestibular system that we just kind of corrected uh, needs to be trained. It's been kind of dysfunctional for a little while. And so vestibular training can be very beneficial following a bout of dizziness. And so what that can look like is uh, a very plain background like the one behind me and putting a sticky note up there for your target and doing those rotational head movements. So you can do a rotational head movement from side to side and then up and down as well. So you want to pick a speed that brings on a little bit of those symptoms of you know feeling unsteady or maybe even like the room is moving, but you don't want it to be too um, extreme because we want to cause a meaningful change in that system. If we don't push it enough, then we won't get enough of a change and the system will be like, well, I don't really need to do that because it's not beneficial. But if we push it too hard, it's not gonna like it. And so it's not gonna want to do that. And so that's where working with a very simple background to start is beneficial. And then as we progress, we can do two different things. We can add a movement component to it, or we can add a complexity component to the visual background. So adding a movement component would be starting with a simple background like the one behind me, and then moving, moving you. So you would walk backwards or forward commonly while doing those same side to side or up and down head rotation movements. The next of which would be increasing the complexity of the background. So that would be adding different colors, textures, shapes, and depth to the background to make it more three-dimensional and to challenge that visual aspect while we're still having you do those rotational head movements. The final component of balance is what's called your base of support. So that's that area underneath you. Uh, typically we're most common with our, typically it's most common to be stable with our feet about shoulder width apart. And so as we bring our feet in together, it increases the complexity of that motion or that task. And so you can go from a feet side to side completely together to stacked one on top of the other. 
in a heel to toe fashion to standing on just one foot. And so that's going to increase the complexity of that motion. So as we increase the complexity of that task, we can have you stand on one foot and do reaching tasks, reaching high, low, and over to your side. And we can also, also put you on an unstable surface. So putting you on a piece of foam in the clinic or something like that would make that task a lot more challenging. So I hope that information was helpful. Uh, hopefully we'll see you back in clinic sooner rather than later as we get through this. Um, our phone number is 303-315-9917. I uh, hope to hear from you guys soon and hope to see you back in clinic sooner rather than later. Stay safe out there. Thanks. Bye.